Well, hello everyone, Dan Herbert, Dan Herbert Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I am here at my outdoor workshop with a brand new tool. A few months ago, like six months ago, John from Sluice Goose, the creators of Gold Drop, said, Dan, I've got this new piece of equipment I want you to try out. And, you know, I th kind of thought, uh, maybe send me one, I'll see if I like it, whatever. Then I started looking up what it was and noticed it is like a fluid bed jig. I made a fluid bed jig early in my prospecting career, a pulse jet jig, and it worked quite well, but it was a home-built eh, thing. This is professional. Uses kind of the similar technology, and it should be great at separating gold from my concentrates. So, called him back and said, yeah, John, I like the looks of that. Send me one. And today, we're going to run it through its paces for the first time with the most difficult cons I can imagine. My Thompson River cons. Hopefully, it can handle the hardest material out there. Don't know. Wish me luck, and I hope you enjoy. Now, Sluice Goose's Gold Drop Concentrator is like a pulse jig, except it doesn't pulse. It just pushes water from the bottom up through the main column, and as water flows upwards, it separates out all the concentrates. It gets them all fluidized and separate and loose. And what that does is in this main chamber here, the heavier materials fall down through the fluidized material, the lighter materials float up through it, and it separates the heavies from the lights. The lightest stuff goes up and out, the heaviest stuff falls down into the jar below. That is the theory behind it. Now, there's a few more technicals about it all, where the water goes in, how it mixes it up in the, cha the main chamber, uh, but the general theory is it separates everything, gets lots of space between all the particles, the heaviest stuff falls, the lightest stuff rises. I'm gonna finish setting it all up and see what we can do. Now the gold drop uses a 12 volt supply. I'm using a big deep cycle battery, but any kind of 12 volt supply would work. Let's connect up and make sure the pump gets going. There we are. We have everything flowing nicely. Now for my setup here, I'm using a bucket and bucket setup. So all the sand cons, all the tailings go into the top bucket. The water overflows into the bottom bucket where the water is being sucked up from the pump and pushed back through the machine. Keeps silt and debris from going through the pump and back into the machine. Also gives us an easy way to grab the tailings afterwards and dump them out and then just continue. If this machine does work as well as I think it's going to, you're going to see me utilizing it at my Trout Creek operation. We have permits in for a machine operation at my Trout Creek mine. I've got two miners coming up to do two separate operations up there, and I hopefully will be doing the cleanups from those operations using the gold drop. That's if it works as well as I think it's going to. Let's test that out today. One thing I should note is the cons from the Trout Creek mine are some of the easiest cons around to clean up, where the Thompson River cons I have today for the machine are some of the toughest. So if it can handle today, it will definitely be able to handle the Trout Creek mine. Let's point out some of the features this thing has. It's got a nice big hopper at the top with water flow into the hopper for washing your cons down into the machine. The manifold from the pump has four hoses coming off it. A couple of them go to the machine itself, but a couple others go to a little sprayer. So you can rinse out the hopper, you can rinse out your bucket, you can do whatever you want with the sprayer. And one goes to a scoop, so you can scoop your cons out of your bucket or whatever, and then use water to wash them down again into the hopper. A couple different valves on the machine itself. The bottom one is the main valve that fluidizes the material and actually starts your separation in the main chamber here. Oh, the main chamber up there, but this is sort of the chamber that does the hard work. This separates the gold from the black sands from the garnets, the really fine separation. Up here is sort of the coarse separation. It gets rid of all your easy light stuff. This does the hard work. 
and we have a valve down here that controls the water in it. We have a valve up here. This one starts the main chamber rotating and mixing up. And this other valve up here, if it's having a hard time breaking the gold away from the black sands, this valve here starts some agitation right in the final cone that agitates everything and will actually help the gold and the black sand separate or mix up so that the gold will fall into the chamber where the hard work is done. We have a gate valve down here at the bottom that separates off the, um, the final jar from the whole machine so you don't have to turn off the whole machine to take your gold out. Just close the gate valve and you can take that out, put a new one on, open the valve again and you're ready to go for the next run. It has a flow meter to help you set the machine so you can set it for just the right amount of water flowing through it to separate the gold from the cons. And a valve at the top for, you know, the hopper. The, he's kind of thought of everything. He also sent me a uh, bracket for holding my bucket in a big garbage can. That works nicely. And all the wires and connectors are all preset so you can just hook it up to a battery or some other 12 volt source. John, you did a nice job of this machine. That's for sure. Now, before I start actually putting the gold rich concentrates in, I'm going to try a little bit of this garnet sand. I just want to get a good feel of how I run the machine before I put my gold in it. So I have some of this garnet sand from my big silver claim there, uh, just full of garnets this is what I use for making my garnet grab bags. And I'm going to put some of this into the machine and see how well the machine can separate the garnets from the quartz and the lighter material in here. This will give me a good little test run before I put, you know, the gold in. Okay, we'll start with one little scoop. We've set the um, flow for about halfway, about 0.5, and I'm gonna put a scoop of my garnets in there and see how it starts working. So you can see down into the chamber here, we have nothing but garnets. Right now, the lighter stuff is up top. The garnets are down being agitated by this water flowing up through here. And we have the odd garnet falling through into the jar below. So it's doing a great job. I only see garnets down there. I don't see any of the quartz material. We might not need much water in the hopper. Good thing my camera is waterproof. Okay, back to what I was saying. We don't have much agitation going on inside the upper chamber here where it tapers down, but it still is moving a little bit, moving down and in. And then that gives a few garnets, which means a few garnets fall. If I want to increase that amount, I will decrease the water flow. There we go, now we have more garnets falling in, hopefully pushing the lighter stuff up and out, and garnets are filling the jar. Looks like I need some agitation up here though, so let's get some agitation going. Little bit of water, there we go, we got some agitation going up there to get the lighter stuff moving up and out. You should be able to see most of the lighter stuff up on top here with less water flowing through the separation chamber, we got more garnets falling, working very nice. Let's try to adjust that a bit more. A little less again. Yep, there's definitely more coming down and in. I see lots falling now. Oh, I see some quartz going down. So I've increased it again to get the quartz to not fall in. That's looking nice. Nothing but garnets and heavies falling. So I have two different types of garnets in this mix. There's the bigger black ones and the smaller jemmy red ones. And you can see they're both down into the, uh, into the separation chamber very nicely. If you look on top, you can see all the lightest material is just sitting up on top, not falling through at all. So the, light, the light quartz up there, the heavy garnets, are right there, falling into the jar beautifully. 
There's probably some ironstone falling in there as well because ironstone is going to be about the same weight as the garnets. I put a white piece of paper behind it so you can see the action inside the chamber a bit better. I think it shows off against the white background better than the black background. And it processes really quick. I just put two more scoops in and, you know, it processed really quick. It brought it down to just, you know, half a cup of material there. It's bringing the garnets down nicely. And yeah, I can't, <laughs> it's working perfect. There's not much more I can say about it. Very easy work and perfect for garnets. I think we need to clear out the garnets and put some gold in there and see how it works with gold. By turning up the percolation water, the stu the mixing in the main chamber, the water, and it's uh, really churning it up now. But you can see none of the heavy stuff is lifting up and out. It's just this lighter debris that's going up into the water and pouring out. And again, nothing but garnets falling. Now the trick here to shut this thing down is you're going to increase your water flow into the chamber. Okay, so that there's no um, material in the final mixing chamber. The final separation chamber is material free, except the odd heart, heavy, heavy garnet that wants to keep going. So increase the water flow, shut off the gate valve, take your jar off, my jar of garnets. We'll put a bucket underneath and then we'll open the valve and everything gets cleaned out. We can close the valve, there we go. We can turn our waters back on, fill the system again, put another jar on it. Here's another jar, put another jar in place, open the valve again, it starts filling back up the water and we're ready to go for round two, this time with gold. Now this thing is able to take anything up to an eighth of an inch, but as with all gold cleanup machines, the more you classify it, the easier it is for the machine to actually separate the dense black sand from the gold itself. So I've classified my Thompson River cons down to 16 mesh. I figure anything between 16 and 1 8 should be easy enough to pan out by hand. Anyone should be able to do that. Now a big difference between my Thompson River cons, which is gold and black sand mostly, and the garnet sand here is, well, size. This goes up to an eighth of an inch. This is classified to 1 16th. But more importantly, garnets are about six times heavier than water or twice as heavy as the other sand around. Gold is 19 times heavier than water and about three or four times as heavy as the black sands that are in there. So it should separate easier. The problem is the gold is so very, very thin and flat. It's like paper in there and it flutters around in the water. It surfs or it flies like a kite in the water. So that's what makes the Thompson River gold so hard to separate is it so unbelievably thin that it flutters and surfs in the water and on the black sand. Let's see how the gold drop does with that. Okay, well, let's see what we can do. Oh, sorry, we have, it, we have it set for 0.5 again, which means it shouldn't have much falling through at the moment. Uh, we should turn on a little bit of hopper water, just a bit to help it flush through. And having a look at it right now, it seems like everything is staying up in the upper mixing chamber in the cone and nothing is coming down into the final separation chamber which i'm good with until i get some more material in there Alrighty, time to set the water so that it actually starts separating gold so the main chamber here is uh churning nicely i've got the water levels up fairly high so it stays churning and moving everything around the um the separation chamber at the bottom is keeping the black sands up and letting hopefully some gold fall through. I may have to adjust that. Uh, and it's just moving around enough to slowly bring all the gold eventually down to the bottom and into the chamber. That's the theory. And the hopper is nice and full. I've got a fair amount of material up here. It's uh, slowly feeding in as it has room for more. So there we go. I've adjusted it down to about 0.3 and uh, black sands are coming down into the final separation chamber and I see flakes of gold all flashing at me all the time. Not much is making it down past the final inlet, the, like the inlet there. 
So hopefully it's just going to be the gold that actually is heavy enough to get down that far and fall through. You'll see there's a little bit of black sand that uh, made it down while I was adjusting things. That's okay. That stuff is going to be so coarse that it's going to be easy, easy, easy to separate from any gold that falls in the jar. Looking good. Let's keep adding material. You can really see in that cone the material working its way down into the bottom and then uh, the lighter stuff being shot up the middle, but all the material is working its way down past that sort of threshold there. So any gold, I see a piece going right now, falls into it, anything lighter gets pushed back up and out. My Thompson River material is very muddy, so it is definitely, um, you know, the water is muddy now. It's hard to see what's going on about halfway up the main chamber. Here's about three quarters of the way up the main chamber. You can see it gets smaller and smaller as it gets near the top. And then it's blowing out the finest, smallest, lightest stuff into the bucket. And the heaviest stuff is falling into the jar, which is muddy enough that, that you can't see right now, because I have very muddy, muddy material. Now that will be the coarsest magnetite and hematite, and the gold, of course. But those are easy to separate. So I've got it all in the machine now. I'm just gonna let it percolate for a while. I'm gonna go have a coffee, actually. Uh, and let it do its thing and separate out the heavies at the bottom, kick the lightest out the top, and the middle stuff, the medium stuff, the stuff that's left inside the chamber is actually important as well. But I'll explain that when I clean out. Now I've let this percolate for like 10 minutes now. Had a good coffee. And I think it's time to shut things down and see where I'm at. So to shut things down here, we want to turn off both of the waters that, you know, push sand up through the main chamber up and out the top so that no sand is now leaving the top. We're going to turn up the water that keeps the sand in the, the final separation here uh, separating. So some is falling, some is going up. We're going to turn that up. So nothing's going out the top, nothing's going out the bottom. Anything that was in that main chamber is still in that main chamber and just staying there spinning around. Nothing is falling out the bottom now. I can shut the gate. Now the gate is shut, nothing's falling into there. So I can now take off the bottom jar and there's my cons. Now I was gonna explain to you the difference between in the jar, in the chamber and in the tailings. Hopefully there's no gold in the tailings. In the jar is anything that is big and heavy enough that what we set the water to let through was let through. So we set it to a certain degree to let a certain size of heavies through. And those should all be in the jar. Up in the chamber still should be anything that the water was set too high to let drop but the main agitation water up here wasn't high enough to blow out the top. So there still is good material in here. So when we go and clean this up, we want to take the high grades, we want to take the mid grades, we want to throw out the tailings. If you are using this machine in a big placer operation or a daily use machine type thing, I would suggest leaving the stuff in here basically permanently clean that out once a week or something where you can clean this out daily. Anything that's in this chamber that is gold should stay in that chamber basically permanently. Let's go see what was in the jar. So the heavies of the heavies, these are all the big round grains of magnetite. Those are big and heavy and sort of dense enough because they're round to fall through that water column. We shake those away and they shake away really easy because they're big and round. If we shake those away, up top is the gold, and that separates really easy from those big round grains of magnetite. Let's get the close-up camera so you can show, I can show you that. Now, as I said earlier, the big round grains just roll away like they're not even there. And the gold is all up there. It'll take me 30 seconds, if that, to separate the black sands from the gold. And there it is. And you can see how well it separated the gold and the lead. Those are all pieces of lead in there. And the black sand, that stuff, just rolled away like it was ball bearings on ice. So easy. Probably took me 45 seconds. Might not have taken me 30 to do it. 45 seconds maybe to clear that gold from its black sands. There's the black sands and there's the gold. But we're not done because that stuff still has the finer gold in it. 
hopefully none in there. I will check that though. This has the finer gold. It should still be easier to separate because it's still the coarser black sand. So to clean out the main chamber here, we're gonna put a bucket underneath it. We're gonna make sure that the, the separation chamber down here at the bottom still has full water flow. We're gonna make sure that the upper ones are both turned off. We will open the gate valve and let everything flow through. We can now turn off the, the water down here. Maybe a few shots of water to clean things out. Flush stuff through the hopper. There we go. We're all cleaned out. Close off the gate valve. We can turn our water back on. It's important to turn the water on and off with this gate valve properly so that you don't have sand and gold and whatnot sitting against the gate valve because when you open it, you can actually pull it in, wreck the seal, and probably get some of your gold stuck in there. So that's why we turn on the water for the separation chamber so it pushes all the material up. We then open and close the gate valve with no material on it. Just a hint to the use of this machine. Let's get the water flowing again. Filling her up with my very muddy water. So that was in the jar. Let's see what was in the machine. Very hard holding a camera and doing some of these things at the same time. It's really nice having two hands to work with. There we go, all cleaned out. Let's see what's in there. First, let's get some clean water. Here's what was left in the machine. I'm gonna take a few seconds here and separate out and show you what was left in the machine. And there should still be good gold here because the smaller stuff that wasn't going into the jar will have stayed in the main fluid bed chamber. And yes, I see lots of gold in here. I'll take a second, clean that out, show you what I got. And there you are there, the gold cleaned up. Wasn't too hard because again, this black sand is all processed so that it's only the coarser black sand that's left. The fine stuff is washed away, means that it rolls away from the flat, flat gold very easily. That took me 30 seconds. That took me two or three minutes. If I was to pan out all of those cons from the Thompson River by hand to separate that gold, it would have been about three hours worth of separation much, much quicker using the machine. Now, because I have two thirds of a bucket, I'm not gonna pan it all out to see what everything I missed. Take one scoop from the bottom, I'm gonna pan that out and see what's in the bucket. Just give me sort of a good idea of how much went through. But there we go, in the jar, in the chamber, in the tailings. Not too bad. So here's the gold from the day high banking at the Thompson. If I had to guess what that was just by looking at it, I would say, well, it looks like about a gram of gold, but the Thompson stuff is always lighter than I expect, so it's probably only half a gram. Throw it on the scale and see what it weighs. 0.64. Not bad. So there's a couple hours high banking at the Thompson River, cleaned up with the gold drop. Look how flat that gold is from the Thompson paper thin. I'd say it's paper thin, but I think it's thinner than paper. So a couple of observations here. This machine, I don't know if it would be worth it for small scale, you know, cons from panning. Because in order to make this sort of pay for itself, you kind of have to have volume going through it. So I think this would be really good in a larger operation, either high bankers, dry washer cons, or uh, in my case, machine operation where we're gonna have lots of cons to go through every single day. And I can see us setting this up in our gold cleanup tent and having it running for hours. You know, just put your cons in, walk away, go have dinner, go continue mining, whatever. Let it do its thing. Get all the settings just right. Get a nice fresh battery every night, you know, charged up with the generator, whatever, and just let it run and do its thing. Make sure you have the settings just right so that you're not losing any gold, you're getting just the best, and anything that stays in the chamber, just continue day after day after day with it in the chamber. Eventually, clear out that chamber and get that gold. Every day you can check what's in the jar, Every day you could toss out your tailings or make sure that your tailings isn't got any gold in it. Uh, again, I think I would classify off probably 50 mesh. I'd probably take 50 mesh off and do it separate from the, the coarser stuff. Maybe set it aside, do it all at once on one day or something like that. And for some reason, everyone loves garnets. So I bet you wanna see those garnets that I cleaned up. Let's get some pictures of those. <laughs> So here's the material that I was working. 
I didn't do it all. This is stuff that is unprocessed. I didn't do it all because I wanted to get to the gold, but here's what it looked like before it was processed. And here's what it looked like after it was processed. That did a nice job, but look how clean and perfect that machine made the garnets. All the quartz and greenstone and ironstone and everything else went away from the original to the cleanup. And of course, I do sell these garnets on my website at www.danherdprospecting.com. Now, I do have to say a thanks to Mark from Kelly Co. for setting me up with John from Sluice Goose to get one of these machines to try out. If you'd like to buy one of these machines, they sell them at Kelly Co. And I have an affiliate link below in all of my videos. Click on the link, goes off to Kelly Co. You can purchase, you know, the gold drop or metal detectors or panning equipment. And because you're using my affiliate link, I get a small kickback for it. Helps support my channel. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, John. Thanks, Kelly Co. Now for a first test of the gold drop, I'd call that a success. It wasn't perfect, and I definitely have some learning to do to make tweak it just right. But I like the machine, and I'd say that was a success. I do have more things I want to process through it, including Hard Rock Crush. I think that machine is going to be a dream for Hard Rock Crush, because when you crush gold ore, it makes small balls or granules of gold that should drop through the gold drop like that. So I've got some buckets here of some gold ore from a couple of my mines. In my next video, I'll be crushing them down and processing them. I'll be processing some of the material through sluices, high bankers, that kind of stuff, but I'm definitely gonna try the gold drop with some of the hard rock crush and see how it does. I think it's gonna be marvelous. Hope everyone enjoyed watching this video of me testing out the gold drop for the first time. If you did, please leave a like below, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and share the video maybe. Thanks to everyone that's watching. A big, big thanks to my patrons out there. Because of your support, I get to offer these weekly episodes of Dan Herd Prospecting. If you'd like to learn how to support my channel, head off to www.patreon.com slash danherd. I hope you're all having an amazing day out there. And until the next video, bye.